Summer had just come to an end here in the Boundary Waters. The weather was beginning to cool, the air was turning crisp, and the bugs had all but vanished from the landscape. My brother, mother, and myself took advantage of this September forecast. This was our mother's first backcountry canoe trip, and we'd be traveling along the Cherokee Loop, a route I had completed numerous times before. We decided to make our first day easy and made camp at the north end of Sawbill Lake. We hadn't anticipated it, but the windy and rainy weather would force us to stay hunkered down for our first and second day. So it's our second morning here in the Boundary Wars. Got pretty chilly last night. Um, temperature dropped quite a bit. Right now we're packing up camp, just waiting for the uh, sun to peek over the trees there. As you can see, there's quite a bit of fog all in the background there. It's kind of rising off the lake. So plans to go to Cherokee today. Hopefully the weather cooperates with us and we have a good day of it. This was our first portage of the route. A quick 83 rods takes you to the swampy waters of Vada Creek. Ah. First try, Ronan. First try.
Towards the northeast end of Otta Creek, the route turns into a marsh. When the water is higher, there is a narrow passage through the reeds that takes you closer to where the portage is marked on most maps. This passage would not be passable to us, being it was later in the year and the Boundary Wars was experiencing a drought. There was currently a fire ban in place. We were forced to pull off on a muddy landing and portage from there, making our way to Scoop Lake. <laughs> you start falling sometimes, you just gotta send it. <laughs> After portaging the 181 rods from Scoop Lake, we arrived at the entrance to the Cherokee Creek, a passage that would take us to Cherokee Lake. Normally, this is where we would launch and begin our paddle down the creek, but this is the lowest water level I'd ever seen along this route, and our only option was to portage off trail through the thick brush and launch further downstream, a task that would prove to be more challenging than expected. Ah! 
The unavoidable detour added roughly 70 rods to the total length of the portage in approximately an extra hour due to the need to scout up ahead prior to completing the portage. The extra portage was not our only obstacle along the creek. Several beaver dams slowed our pace. In previous years, with higher water levels, one could generally squeeze through a small gap, just barely scraping the top of the dam. But this year, with the low water, significantly more of the dam was exposed, which required us to make multiple portages over them. That was bad to carry. That already sucks. Now I'm going to need you on the right side. The water already got cleaner just from being so close to the lake. Yeah. The turtle. Right there. Oh, yeah. Turtle. You should be in the clear if you stay to the right or to the left, but there's stuff in the center. Yeah, it gets pretty deep past here. So now I gotta decide what camps I want. My own, I would say the horseshoe one if it's open. My only thought about it is it is exposed. There's not a whole lot of protection. Like if it rains or storms. If it gets windy, it really gets windy there. But it's supposed to get up to 25 miles an hour after midnight, they said. Yeah. Which isn't too fast, but... On Cherokee Lake, we paddled over to a campsite on the western shore. The site is tucked into a cove and is well sheltered from most weather. This is a site I had been to before and is one of my favorite campsites on the lake. This is actually we unloaded our canoe Mark. and got to work setting up camp. Sun's way up there. Well, you could get here later. <laughs> Very possible. All right, can you grab it?
a cord to it and run it all the way down there. Bad. Yeah, it's the only thing I'm going to go rake. Because that's the only thing is I don't know where my... All the time. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I did that when we were up on the top of that huge tall cliff. Oh, that's so nice. Which one is my phone? With only a couple hours of daylight, we made dinner and began preparations to secure camp. While I hung bear eggs, my mom and brother made a quick water run just before the sun set. With the last bit of light reflecting off the clouds, the three of us began settling in for the night. We went to bed and drifted off to sleep. Shortly into the night, I was awakened by a loud crack of thunder overhead. Hey everyone, it is a brisk morning here in the Boundary Waters. Uh, last night we got pounded by rain, wind, thunder, and lightning. Uh, it kind of lasted all through the night. I think I checked my watch around like 5.30 and it was still going. So yeah, um, it's still pretty windy right now. Obviously you can see it's overcast. Um, sounds like we're supposed to have wind and rain kind of the rest of the day, which kind of sucks, but it is a zero day. We're just base camping today, so we're not gonna be doing any moving. So that's nice, that's a plus. But the plan is to sit here today and then weather dependent, we're either gonna paddle part way out on Friday and then finish it out on Saturday or we're going to sit here Friday night as well and then paddle out completely on Saturday. So we're not sure yet, but we'll kind of see how it goes. Uh, we got a really pretty spot, we're on Cherokee, uh, Cherokee Lake right now. And this is a spot I've been to before and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's really sheltered, I mean, it doesn't seem like it because it's really windy and stuff right here right now but compared to the rest of the lake it's actually very sheltered so we're lucky to have this spot for the kind of weather we're having right now 
temperature is going to be dropping a little bit. Hopefully it, it's not too cold tonight. Um, hopefully the weather kind of cooperates with us a little bit. Yeah, so we'll see. We're kind of nervous um, about the water passages. So normally what would take, you know, maybe 20 minutes to paddle through Cherokee Creek is now taking an hour because there was such a drought this year that Cherokee Creek has actually dried up. You guys saw that yesterday um, where we actually had to portage through a non-existent portage. Um, and that added like an hour to that whole thing. So the 180 rod portage that we already did turned into more of like a 250. So that kind of sucked, but is what it is. That's all part of the experience. So yeah, so the rest of the day, we're just gonna be hanging out in camp, enjoying, enjoying the boundary waters and hopefully the weather changes and cooperates with us. By early morning the storm had subsided, and all that remained was the dripping of water off the pine boughs. After a quick breakfast, the three of us began breaking camp. The plan for today was to continue along the loop. From Cherokee Lake, we would travel through Sitka, North and South Temperance, and take the 225 rod portage into the Temperance River. The river would take us through Weird, Jack, and Kelly Lake. We planned to make camp on either Burnt or Smoke Lake, but backcountry trips don't always go as planned.
Ronan, come on. Good boy. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Stay. I'll just turn the other side. Just keep going forward. No, other side, man. Other side. Upon reaching Southern Temperance Lake, the wind began to pick up significantly. We had to dig a little harder with each stroke of the paddle as we fought the wind head on. Eventually we reached the shorelines of calmer waters. The smaller bodies didn't come without their challenges though. Several beaver dams and low water levels brought upon unforeseen portages and our pace began to slow. Thank you. 
We continued south through Jack and Kelly Lake, following the flow of the Temperance River. Edging near the portage of Kelly and Burnt Lake, the sun was beginning to dip below the trees. As we portaged into the darkening forest, it became apparent we would not find a campsite before nightfall. The decision was made to push on to Sawville Lake, which meant we would be traveling into the night. We chased the last remaining glow of light as it disappeared into the horizon. Like a lighthouse guiding us home, the glow faltered just as our last few strokes broke the surface of the water. You sure? Yeah. Pull the bags out. You can climb out. 